Good morning, neighbors. So before I sing this old hymn, Draw Me Nearer, I thought, you know, I'd like to see who wrote this song. Maybe there's, and it's Fanny Crosby. This woman was greatly anointed by God to come to be inspired to write all these songs. So let's sing it. I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice, and it told thy love to me. But I long to rise in the arms of faith and be closer drawn to thee. So draw me song you know it's it is our heart's cry i pray you know david wrote in uh the book of psalms uh in verse 25 whom have i in heaven but you and there is none upon earth that i desire beside you my flesh and my heart fail but god is the strength of my heart and my portion forever 
For indeed, those who are far from you shall perish. You have destroyed all those who desert you for harlotry. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all your works. And I like his question, because he's asking, you know, who, who really do I have in, in heaven besides you? There is none on, uh, upon earth that I desire besides you. My flesh and my heart fail, but God is the strength of my heart, my portion forever. But I like this. Uh, but it is good for me to draw near to God. Because it says, for indeed those who are far from you shall perish. You know, if we're far from God, what do we have? We'll just perish. We'll just die. You have destroyed all those who desert you for harlotry. People who go running after other gods and the things of this world, he said, they'll just be judged and they'll be destroyed. So it's good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God. That's uh, Psalm 73, uh, 25 to 28. I don't think I said that earlier. So he, David, you know, he's living in a time there is Jesus hadn't come yet. Uh, there's just this promise, you know, that had been prophesied. So he's looking for that, but he said, until then, I'll just draw nearer to God, you know, until the salvation, this perfect lamb comes. But then Jesus comes, and he's sent to us, but in Acts chapter 17 and verse uh, 26, and it says, And he has made from one blood every nation of men to dwell on all the face of the earth. And has determined their pre-appointed times and the boundaries of their dwellings. You know, God, he has placed this time on us. How long do we have? Uh, we don't really know. Uh, we some uh, I've known people who've died very, you know, close to 100 years old. Maybe I've known people who lived to be 100. I don't know. But I've known people who died as children and everywhere in between. God alone knows our pre-appointed times, and the boundaries of them, so that they should seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him. You know, he's placed this time on us. You know, the, the says uh, it's better to go to the house of mourning than the house of rejoicing because when we go to the house of mourning, it, re it really puts in our mind there is there's a set time that we all have. So when we understand this, instead of ignoring it, what we should do is, Seek the Lord in the hope that they might grope for him and find him. You know, groping is like, where are you? I'm so desperate. I have to find you. But I like this. Though he is not far from each one of us, he's right there, willing and waiting to save whom, wherever come, whom would ever come. And I like, though he is not far from each one of us, he's near to each and every one. No matter how wretched you are or how good you may think you are, he is not far for in him we live and move and have our being, as also some of your own poets have said, for we are also his offspring. You know, so in him we live and move and have our being. It's all within him. Therefore, since we are the offspring of God, we ought not to think that the divine nature is like gold or silver or stone, something shaped by art and man's devising. Truly, these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent. Because, you know, he, he gives a reason. He wants, he, and he commands all men everywhere to repent, which is to change. Because he has appointed a day on which he will judge the world in righteousness by the man whom he has ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising him from the dead. And so he's given us this chance. You know, he's near to all of us and he wants to help us because it's been ordained. He has given assurance of this to all by raising who? his son from the dead. But again, people are just people. When they heard of the resurrection of the dead, some mocked, while others said, we will hear you again on this matter. So Paul departed from among them. He was trying to give them, listen, there's a chance. He's not far from any of us. He's right there. You know, Paul, he recognizes I'm the chiefest of all sinners, and he was there for me. And he came for me, and he's there for you as well. You can be saved. You can find salvation. Just return from your wicked ways. And uh, it is a difficult thing sometimes. But So Paul departed from among them. However, some men joined him and believed. Among them, Dionysius, the Areopagite, a woman named Damaris, and others with them. So the group as a whole may have some whatever. They just mocked him. 
Like I said, well, I'll hear you again sometime. You know, when I have time, you can talk some more. Paul just leaves, but there are some who join. So there's always that hope. You know, may not be in great numbers, but there, hey, he who saves one saves the world entire. God bless you all in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.